Yo, what's going on guys? Today it is all about the M1 Max MacBook Pros. Now I was actually one of the lucky few people that got this computer on the very first day that it launched. So I've been using this thing now for coming up on a few months and I definitely have some strong opinions on it. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about the things that I wish I knew about this MacBook Pro before I actually purchased it for myself. We're gonna talk about the good stuff, the things that I really love about these computers, as well as the bad stuff, the things that I wish were maybe a little bit better about them. And we're gonna cover things like 14 inch for a 16 inch model, as well as the M1 Max chip versus the M1 Pro chip. So just keep those things in mind when we're going through all this information. So I think this video is gonna be really helpful for you guys. And if you do enjoy watching today's video, be sure to drop this video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel as well. But you know what? Let's go ahead and hop into the first thing that I love about these new MacBook Pros. So first up, we have the performance out of these computers. And I'm sure you guys have heard this by plenty of people out there already, but the performance on these are incredible. I'm talking really good for 4K video editing with very hard codecs and different frame rates, things that your cameras are doing these days that are really intensive or hard for your computers to handle. Absolutely no problem on this computer. With presets, effects, you name it, whatever I've been able to throw at this computer, it's been able to handle it without any problem at all. And that carries over to design work, editing photos, high megapixel photos, hundreds at a time, thousands of times, no problem at all, even with all these programs open at the same time. And honestly, the performance is so good, I'm not even really considering at this point getting a desktop computer in addition. So I don't really need a Mac mini or an iMac or a Mac Pro. I plug this thing into my ultra wide computer right here and it has desktop level performance in this tiny little body right here. So obviously everybody's use and performance is going to be a little bit different for them. And in front of me right here, I have the M1 Max chip, which is the top of the top. But even all the reviews and people that I've heard using the M1 Pro chip, it's still incredible. And if you're looking for just that extra headroom or you just don't want to ever run into any issues Issues at all. The M1 Max chip, you can't really go wrong. And if you're someone like myself that uses this for your actual business and profession, that little extra money getting the M1 Max chip, you're gonna get that back so fast with the amount of time you're able to save with this. It's just honestly a no-brainer for me, and I highly, highly recommend it. The performance out of these computers are incredible. All right, so next up, let's talk about the amazing screens on these computers. Now, right here in front of me, I actually have the 16 inch model, but actually day one, when I first got this computer, I picked up the 14 inch model. And I wanna be clear, both of them are actually amazing. And I actually have a full video dedicated to why I switched from the 14 inch to the 16 inch. I'll have it linked up here if you guys wanna check that out. But I'll try to sum up that entire video here in like 20 seconds. Basically, the 14 inch model is really nice and it's really cool that Apple put the same chip and the same specs in both computer sizes, but there was still a little bit of performance difference in the 16 inch versus the 14 inch. The 16 wins by a little bit. And also really the more important part, which what it came down to for me is the 14 inch is nice because it's smaller, it's lighter, it's more portable, but the 16 inch model fits in my backpack exactly the same as the 14 inch. And whenever I get to my actual destination, I do quite a bit of traveling for work. When I get to that actual destination and I open up my computer to get some work done, I was really wishing I had a larger screen real estate to get my work done. Obviously, I do a lot of video editing, so having a little bit bigger of a real estate when you're talking about screen size does make a big difference to me, but maybe if you don't need to do that much intensive stuff whenever you are mobile and on the go and whenever you're not plugged into an external monitor, the 14 inch could be a really good option for you. It just kind of comes down to what you want and what is important to you. But regardless of the 14 inch or the 16 inch model, the displays are absolutely amazing. I mean, honestly, it's one of the best displays that you're going to get on the market. It's super bright. The colors are absolutely amazing. The blacks are really black. The colors pop. The variable pro motion on these displays is just mind-blowing. Honestly, the displays are so good on this, it's going to make any other display you use look just old. So beware of that, but you are really going to enjoy the displays on these new MacBook Pros, and really the size of which model you're going to go with is just kind of preference and what's important to you. So the next thing I love about this computer is that they brought back the ports. Now, I'm not one of those people that are like, well, Apple took it away and now they brought it back, so I'm not excited about it. I don't care who took it away. I am excited that I have it back. I love the fact that they brought back MagSafe and the fact that it has quick charge. So you can get this computer back to about 50% battery in 30 minutes, which is just awesome. And you can actually charge it through USB-C as well. Like if you're someone like myself where I plug this into my ultra wide computer, just with one single cord, the USB-C, it allows it to display to my ultra wide as well as keeps it charged. So it's nice that you can kind of do both depending on what you need. The HDMI is nice as well. I don't really use that too much myself, 
But the big important one to me is the fact that it has an SD card slot back. I can't even tell you how many times I use that. And it's just nice that you can take this thing on the go again. You don't have to worry about having the right dongle with you at all times. So the next thing I love about these computers, which might be surprising to you, is how good these speakers are in them. Now I'm the type of person that always uses headphones, but once you listen to something with these actual speakers in this MacBook Pro, I'm talking music, or especially if you're watching movies or TV shows, it somehow has this amazing surround sound effect to it. I'm not kidding. It sounds incredible. Both on the 16 inch and the 14 inch is probably a little bit better on the 16 inch. But these days, if I'm traveling and I'm in my hotel room or honestly, a lot of times here in my office, instead of putting in my AirPods or hooking this up to a Bluetooth speaker, I willingly will play music through the speakers because it honestly sounds that good. All right, so the fifth thing that I love about these MacBook Pros is the fact that they have a low power mode. Obviously, when you're talking about a very powerful machine, it's going to draw a lot of power. Now, the battery life on the 16 inch as well as the 14 inch are both pretty good. Not as good as the last generation, the M1 MacBook Pros, the first iteration of the M1 chip. Those were just mind blowing, but obviously the performance wasn't on par to these computers. But if you're comparing it back to the two generations ago MacBook Pros, it absolutely destroys that type of battery life. You're going to be able to edit on these things for hours at a time, if not longer than that. I do have a video where I go into the battery life a little bit more and showing exact examples. So definitely check that one out. But both of these computers, whether you're talking about the 14 inch or the 16 inch, they do have a low power mode. And basically what that does is it drops the performance a little bit of your computer, but it just helps extend that battery life. So maybe you're somewhere where you can't plug in or you can't charge. And roughly I would say it kind of helps double the battery life that you normally get out of your computer. So that's just a really cool feature because we all know that we aren't always doing the most intensive stuff on your computer. And obviously these chips are so powerful in these. Sometimes you don't need all that power and you'd rather just have a little bit extra battery life. And honestly, from what I know, the M1 Pro chip MacBook Pros are actually even more efficient, which it makes sense because they're not as powerful or drawing as much power as the M1 Max chips. All right, so at this point in the video, we're about halfway through. We've talked about the five things I love about this MacBook Pro. Honestly, there is more than just five, but typically in these types of videos that I film, I will now talk about the five things I wish were a little bit better about that product. But I gotta be honest, I couldn't even think of five things I dislike about this. So this part of the video is gonna be a little bit shorter. But let's hop into the things I wish were a little bit better about these M1 Max MacBook Pros. So the first thing up is that I wish this computer had Face ID. Now I'm not one of those people at all that hate on the notch. I don't think it's a big deal at all. I never even noticed it. And there's never been any program that I use that it's conflicted anything at all. But it is kind of a large notch just for a face cam. So why not just go ahead and throw in Face ID? In my opinion, Apple wasn't going to make a small notch for the face cam this year. And then in the coming years, make the notch bigger and bigger to be able to fit in this different technology technology for, you know, face ID or et cetera. And although touch ID is really nice, the fact that this has instant wake when you open it up, if I could just open this thing up and instantly it just unlocks for me, that would just be such a nice touch. So it's not the most important thing in the world, but we know it's coming. So Apple, please just go ahead and add it in. And that would be just so nice. Now, next thing up, I'm being a little bit picky here and I do understand why, but I wish it had a little bit better battery life. Now I will say, since I've switched over to the 16 inch model, the battery life is significant significantly better than the 14 inch. So I would definitely keep that in mind. If you are going for the 14 inch, you really are just asking for that mobile power and you are going to be plugging it in quite often, whether it be to a display or just physically charging it. But I got so spoiled with that last generation, the M1 MacBook Pros, the battery life on that thing was insane. On the 14 inch model, although again, the performance is so high, it's drawing a lot of power. The 14 inch model, it would last me about two hours of intense video editing. And although the 16 inch model is a little bit better, it still isn't as good as that last generation. Again, I'm saying it's way better than previous models of the MacBook Pros, but you know, if this is turning into a wish list or turning into the things I wish were better about this MacBook Pro, there's always going to be a need or a want for better battery life. But I do understand the performance level and the power that these computers draw. So I am willing to sacrifice battery life for performance. But again, dream world scenario, of course, I want better battery life. Now, the third thing that I wish was different about these MacBook Pros, and honestly, I was really hopeful for because I come from the mindset of I like my things to look really good, especially things that I spend a lot of money on, and this is a beast of a thing to buy. I think it'd be really cool if the MacBook Pros came in different colors. I'm talking different than just silver and gray. I like how in their iPhone line, the Pro models have a different color scheme or different color options than the normal ones. And we're starting to see, you know, things like MacBook Airs, 
miss the iPad Airs, things like that, getting different colors, fun colors. And I wanna see these top of the line MacBook Pros I want you to pull them out and people go, whoa, that is the MacBook Pro. Like if they added like that Sierra blue color that they had in the iPhones or that army green color that they had a few years back in the iPhone as well. I know I'm sounding ridiculous. It's not that important of a thing, but I want my stuff to look cool and you know, why not? Come on, Apple, give us some cool colors, all right? All right, guys, so those are really the main things that I love about this computer, as well as the things I wish were a little bit better about it. I mean, I wasn't lying. The list of things I love about this computer could probably be 10 to 15 different items. This computer is extremely close to being the perfect computer for me. I mean, the performance is amazing. The battery life is good enough for me, as well as that quick charge gets me back to 50% super quick whenever I need that. And then really the most important thing is, is whether I'm using this on the go or I'm using it here in my office, I can plug it up to my ultra wide computer, use it as a desktop. It doesn't feel like a laptop at all. And then I can be on the go with it. And between the screen size, having the ports back and the performance that I get out of this, honestly, I can get any type of work done, whether I be on the go or here in my home office, all on one machine. I don't even have to think about it. And at the end of the day, that is what's important to me. I'm able to get my time back and I don't have to worry about my machine at all. I can just sit down and create whatever I need to do. I'm talking video, design work, photo work, you name it, you can do it on this computer and you're gonna be able to do it really, really well. So guys, let me know down in the comments below what you think of these MacBook Pros. Did you pick one up for yourself? Are you on the fence about one? Are you team 14 inch for 16 inch? I would love to hear you guys' thoughts and I will definitely be trying to respond to all you guys down in the comments below as well. But guys, that is gonna be it for me in today's video. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you did, will you please drop this video a thumbs up. If you're new around here, consider subscribing. It helps out me and the channel more than you can even imagine. And also go ahead and follow me over on my other socials as well. I'll have them linked down in the description below. But guys, I'm out for now. I'll catch you in the next video very, very soon. Peace guys.